Most busy men are only a few simple food swaps away from shedding their belly fat. But the internet is full of diets that make men feel more starved, more deprived, and falling off the diet wagon, only to regain the body fat. But in this video, I'll show you 10 foods you can easily add to your diet to stay fuller and energized while you lose more body fat long term. These foods help my busy clients get and stay lean and also got me ripped at 6% body fat for a bodybuilding competition. But first, I'll show you this important study to prove why these foods are beneficial for men over 30 who want to lose the belly and stay lean. And unfortunately, my beloved dark chocolate doesn't make the list. So in this study, the researchers measured how full and satisfied the participants felt after eating different foods. They called this the food satiety index. The base score was set to 100 for white bread, which means foods above 100 are more satiating than white bread. Foods below 100 are less satiating. So a high score food is more filling, which means you can eat less of it and stay fuller for longer, or potentially eat more of it without blowing up your calorie budget. And this is crucial for losing belly fat because staying full not only helps us stick to our diet without feeling starved, but these high scored foods can provide more energy to perform in your workouts and day to day in our busy lives, while giving us the nutrients and amino acids to build and maintain muscle. Because the more muscle you have, the higher your metabolism is, making it easier to keep the body fat off long term. So let me show you the top 10 ranked foods from this study. As a bonus, I've also added the GI glycemic index score, which is a reference on how these foods may trigger blood sugar. So if you are in a fat loss phase, it's going to help to avoid the high GI foods if you wanna stay fuller for longer. I'll also show you the calories per gram, which is helpful for choosing foods that you can eat more of without going over your calorie budget. And I'll also give you a few tips on how to factor these 10 foods into your daily Diet. Starting at food number 10. This food ranks at 157 for satiety, has a GI score of medium, and has 247 calories per 100 grams. This is wholemeal bread, which is a source of fiber and a versatile food that you can fit into a breakfast or a lunchtime, say a sandwich, slap some grilled chicken or a lean beef patty on there with some salad, and you've got yourself a high protein sandwich. Or you could add one or two slices with some scrambled eggs for a high protein breakfast or dinner, doesn't matter what time you eat it. But be careful with butters or oils or sauces because they can pack hidden calories which are easy to overlook. Food number nine, 162 on the satiety index. The GI score is low and the calories are 69 per 100 grams. So slightly more satiating than wholemeal bread, but much lower calories per 100 grams. These are nature's lollipops, grapes. They are low calorie and can be a pre or post-workout snack, along with a protein shake or some jerky or whatever you like. They also go well with yogurt for a leaner dessert and they're low GI. So there's no need to worry about spiking your blood sugar, especially for people who you know, aren't affected by diabetes or similar ailments. Food eight, satiety score is 168 with a GI score of medium and the calories are 78 per 100 grams. These are baked beans. And if your digestive system can tolerate beans, then they make a great side dish for you know, almost any meal and they pack a little bit of protein. People say that they're high in protein, that's not true. They're high in carbs with relatively more protein compared to other carbohydrates. However, they also go well with wholemeal toast and some eggs for a filling, satiating breakfast. Food number seven, satiety score is 176 with a low GI and the calories are 250 per 100 grams. So slightly high calories. However, we're talking about beef which is protein packed, helps provide us with amino acids to build muscle and keep us fuller for longer. However, I, re I recommend looking at leaner cuts if you're in a fat loss phase, because you want to avoid high fat cuts like Wagyu style steaks or ribeyes. That way you're going to be getting more meat for less calories, more protein. And you can also look at ground beef, which comes in leaner options as well. So steak is great for dinner since it can be quite a heavier protein to eat that digest for a longer time. So eating protein in the morning or lunchtime may not be appropriate if you're gonna do like a workout or you know, kind of be quite active around those times, but you can easily add veggies or a salad or the ultimate carb to it, which I'll reveal in a minute. Food number six, satiety score is 188, GI score medium, calories are 111 per 100 grams. I was surprised by this one, but the data doesn't lie. This is brown pasta. It is a whole grain, so it helps to keep you fuller for longer compared to white pasta, which isn't on the list. And this can work well with a lunch or a dinner, especially when you pair it with a protein source like chicken or fish or even you know beef mince, 
with some vegetables and some seasoning or even a tomato-based sauce. So you can get creative with it. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, but pasta is, you know, quite versatile. Food number five. Satiety score is 197 with a low GI score and only 52 calories per 100 grams. This is almost one of the best calories per gram foods. Definitely it's getting down there. It's getting quite low. And we're talking about apples. They say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And I think that's bullshit. However, apples work well at almost any time of the day, whether it's a mid-morning snack with protein, a pre-workout or a post-workout. You can even chop them up, slice them up, pop it into a uh, yogurt for a tasty dessert. Again, versatile food, healthy snack, it's fruit, it's fiber, it's all good. Food number four, satiety score of 202, low GI, and even lower, 47 calories per 100 grams. This is the lowest calories per gram of this top 10 list, and we're talking about oranges. Two oranges is 200 grams, which is a decent amount of food considering that some meals, like a pre-cooked meal from U Foods or whatever, may only be 250 to 300 grams. So two oranges is 200 grams, and that's less than 100 calories, which is great value. And like apples and grapes, they contain fiber, vitamins, and nutrients that are healthy for us, and they're just a great little snack or a dessert. Also add them into a salad if you want for a refreshing twist. And the fact is I've never met anyone who became obese from eating fruit. Have you? All right, the final three. Food number three has a satiety score of 209, low GI, and at 389 calories per 100 grams. This is the highest calories per gram of this list. It's quite big. However, oats are very filling. They're a versatile food. You can add protein powders to it. You can even add eggs to it. You can add yogurt to it, fruit, berries, whatever you like. Overnight oats are very popular. The GI score, as you can see, is low. So yes, even though it is a carbohydrate, it's not gonna spike your blood sugar and turn you into a diabetic. If you eat them within a moderate serving and stick to your calorie budget. Food number two, satiety score of 225. Low GI and 100 calories per 100 grams. That's one for one. This is some lean protein. We're talking about white fish. White fish, is, which is super lean and packs a high ratio of protein per calorie. But if you're like me and you struggle to eat fish and maybe chicken breast or egg whites are quite close in terms of the ratio of protein to calories. However, fish works well for lunches and for dinners, your veggies or salad. You can also look at you know, and tuna, which is a popular uh, protein snack that's convenient to take with you. Now we're down to number one. This food ranks the highest on the Satiety Index study with a score of 323. The GI score is medium and it only contains 77 calories per 100 grams. This is a massive score and it's relatively low calories per gram ratio. And I'm talking about a sole enriching carbohydrate, that is potatoes. They're very filling and they can be eaten with almost anything, mashed, boiled, baked. Come on, how can you not love a potato? And if you're in a fat loss phase, I would reduce or cut out any unnecessary butters or oils that you don't need to add in or only use a very small amount. But hey, if you put some fresh potatoes next to a steak on my plate, I'm in heaven. Now, I wouldn't eat potatoes before a workout because they can feel a bit dense in the stomach and take a bit longer to digest because they hold a lot of water. But they work well for dinner, maybe a little bit for lunch, depending on when your workout is and how much energy you actually need in that day. Now, I'm not saying you need to eat all 10 of these foods every day, but if you include them into your diet and you're in a fat loss phase, it will help you stay fuller for longer and you can eat more food for less calories. But I also recommend factoring in other foods you enjoy, whether that's some dark chocolate or crackers or rice or different types of fruits, whatever you want. That way you won't feel deprived and you can sustain your fat loss phase long-term to reach your lean body fat goals. However, you can eat the healthiest foods in the world every day and still not lose belly fat unless you shift your body into a fat loss mode, which I explain in this video right here, where I'll show you the simple steps to turn on the fat loss mode in your body, no matter how busy you are. If you want my step-by-step -step system to implement a nutritional strategy that will get you into a fat loss mode, download a copy of my Get Ripped Report. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.